children, I am teacher Melissa F. Panaga. I will be your teacher for your lesson today. Our lesson today is to determine the distinguishing characteristics of vertebrates and invertebrates. Our objective is describe the characteristics of vertebrates and invertebrates. If you were asked to define what an animal is, you would probably say that animals generally move, breathe, and eat as most animals do. Yet, we cannot define animals strictly based on these characteristics because not all animals inhale and exhale. Even though we know that all living things take up oxygen and produce carbon dioxide. Now, let's try to discover... Observe the parts of each picture by looking at the following characteristics. A. Movement. How they move. B. Backbone. Do they have spine or backbone? Letter C. Body covering. What is their body protection or outer covering? Our examples are human, ant, goldfish, and chicken. Humans move by contracting and relaxing the muscles with the coordination of bones where these muscles are attached. Do we have backbone? Yes, we have backbone. And our body covering is skin. How about ants? Do you know how they move? Do they have backbone? And what is their body covering? Ants have six legs that were attached to the thorax, which they use for crawling. They don't have backbone, and their body covering is made up of glucose-based material called chitin. Fish swims by flexing their bodies and tail back and forth. They stretch or expand their muscles so it moves rapidly in the water by swishing their tail from side to side. They have backbones, and their body covering is called scale. Chicken move by their strong muscles and flapping their wings to move while their feet are on the ground. They have backbone, and their body covering is feather. Look at the pictures. What animals are shown here? What is common to all of them? The animals in the picture are different, but what is common among them? Did you say the presence of the backbone? Yes, these animals whose skeletons are shown here belong to the group of vertebrates. Vertebrates are a group of animals that have backbone. The backbone provides actual support and houses the spinal cord. At the end of the spinal cord, is the enlarged brain. Scientists classified vertebrates into five groups. We have mammals, amphibians, fishes, reptiles, fishes. and birds. Fishes live in water. They are called blooded animals, which means their temperature changes depending on the temperature of their surroundings. They have a body shape adapted for living and moving in aquatic habitats. Their bodies are protected with scales and they breathe through their gills. They undergo external fertilization, which means they lay eggs. Let's go to amphibians. Amphibian means double lives, which refers to the ability of the animals to live in both land and water. They are called blooded animals, which means their temperature depends on the temperature of their surroundings. Most of the amphibians have thin, soft, and slimy skin, which is also used for breathing. The moist surface of their skin enables them to absorb oxygen from the air. The baby amphibians use their gills in breathing while in water while the adult amphibians use their lungs for respiration. They undergo external fertilization, which means they lay eggs. Examples are toads, salamanders, and newts.
Reptiles are cold-blooded animals. They can also live in both water and land. Although, they are more adapted and can live on land for a long period of time. This is because they have developed lungs as well as body structures that enable them to fully live on land. The reptile's body is covered with dry skin and hard scales. These prevent the loss of water from the body through evaporation. Their eggs have bladdery shells which makes them adapted for developing on land. Examples are crocodile, chameleon, turtle, and snake. The other kind of vertebrates are birds. Have you seen birds in one of your field trips? What are their characteristics? Birds are warm-blooded animals. They can regulate their own body's temperature. They lay eggs and their body covering is cold feather. They remain active in cold and warm climates. They have a respiratory system that includes air sacs, which gives them a unique mechanism for breathing. Most birds can fly with exemption such as emu, penguin, and kiwi. Even chicken can fly short distance. This is because birds have very light bodies which consist a hollow bones. They also possess flight feathers found in their wings and tails, which are arranged in a way that help carry and lift the bird up in the air. Different birds have different body structure that help them adapt to their environment. Examples of birds are sparrow, eagle, and woodpecker. The last classification of vertebrates are mammals. Do you know the characteristics of mammals? The term mammals came from the Greek word mama, which means breast. They are the only group of animals with mammary gland which produce milk to nourish their young. Mammals are warm-blooded animals just like birds. They have hairy bodies. Mother mammals retain their young in their bodies until they are ready to be born. Examples are cat, monkey, and human. In the previous lesson, you studied the group of vertebrates and their characteristics. Now, you're about to study the other group of animals, the invertebrates. Observe the animals shown in the picture. These animals belong to the group of invertebrates. So what is invertebrate? Invertebrates are animals that do not have backbone. They are usually a small moving animals. They do not have a well-developed brain and they have a simple nervous system. Invertebrates were classified into cnidarian, echinoderm, sponges, mollusks, worms, and arthropod. Now, let's talk about mollusks. Mollusks are a group of invertebrates that have soft bodies and may be covered with hard shells. This group of mollusks have thick muscular foot. Sometimes, the muscular foot is used to open and close their shell and others use it for movement or to bury themselves in the sand or mud. The head region of the mollusks usually contain a mouth and sense organs, such as the eyes. The rest of the body contains all their organs in one area called the visceral mass. Examples of mollusks are squid, octopus, snail, and sea slug. Next are worms. Worms are classified based on their structure. The first one is platyhelminths, or commonly known as flatworm. They have flat and ribbon-like bodies. They do not have body cavities that contain developed circulatory or respiratory organs. 
They feed by sucking out juices from the body of their prey. Their digestive cavity has only one opening for taking in food and excreting waste. Example is planaria. Next, the nematodes. They are called as round worms. They have long, smooth, and rounded bodies with rings used for locomotion and protection. Round worms take in food through the mouth and excrete waste materials through the anus. The passage of food through the digestive system is propagated by the worm's wave-like movement. Example is Ascaris. How about annelids? Annelids are also called as segmented worms. They have long segmented bodies to burrow in the soil or swim in the water easily. The first segment in an annelid's body contains the brain and sense organs, while the rearmost segment contains the anus. While annelids have digestive, circulatory, and nervous system, they do not have a respiratory system. They have to breathe through their skin. That is why their skin needs to be moist all the time. Example is earthworm. How about cnidarians? What are their characteristics? Cnidarians are invertebrates that exhibit radical symmetry, meaning they have tentacles that are lined with stinging cells. Their stinging cells help them defend themselves and catch food. Animals belong to this group look like plants because they are attached to the ocean floor. They are about 10,000 kinds of these marine animals. They are mostly found in the ocean and fresh water. Examples are the sea animal, jellyfish, and hydras. Let's talk about echinoderms. Echinoderms are a group of invertebrates with spiny skin. They live in the ocean. Echinoderms do not have a head end or a tail end. They are the only animals that have a tube feet. A thin wool tubes or tentacles used for movement and feeding. The bodies of echinoderms have an internal network or fluid-filled canals that are connected through a large body cavity. This makes feeding, moving, and sensing their environment easier. Examples are starfish, sea cucumber, and sea urchin. Have you used sponge in baiting? What did you observe? The tiny openings enable the sponge to absorb and hold much water. Sponge is the simplest of all invertebrates. Living sponges are full of tiny openings or pores. These pores give sponges their scientific name porifera, which means pore bearers. They are sessile animals, which means they are stationary. Most sponges live in ocean. And these are examples of sponges. Let's talk about arthropods. Arthropods are the most numerous among all the invertebrates in the world. They are the only invertebrates with jointed appendages. They have segmented body parts, the head, thorax, and abdomen. Now, let's talk about different classes of arthropods. The first one is insect. Insects are the only arthropods with wings. They have segmented bodies covered with exoskeleton and divided into three body regions. We have the head, thorax, and abdomen. They are three pairs of jointed legs, meaning they have six legs. All insects reproduce sexually. Examples are butterfly, bug, dragonfly, mosquito, and housefly. These insects reproduce quickly. Flies, for example, can reproduce 100 eggs at one time. And a queen bee can lay 1 million eggs during her life. 
The second class of arthropods is arachnid. Arachnids have two main body regions, the head and the thorax, combined together to form a cephalothorax and the abdomen. They have four pairs of jointed legs attached to the cephalothorax. Aside from the eight legs, they have another pair of appendages near the mouth part called chelicera. These are used to hunt their prey mainly insects. Examples are spiders, ticks, scorpions, and mites. The third class of arthropods are the crustaceans. Crustaceans are arthropods that live in water. These animals have two body regions, the cephalothorax and abdomen. They have many specialized appendages. The front pair of legs with the large claws is called the calipeds. They are used for protection and grabbing food. The jaw-like appendages on their head used for chewing and crushing food are called mandibles. Examples are crabs, shrimps, and the lobster. The last class of arthropods are millipedes and centipedes. Millipedes and centipedes have a long, worm-like body with many appendages. They look like segmented worms, but the jointed legs identify them as arthropods. Centipedes have a pair of legs per segment about 30 legs. They are considered carnivorous because they eat insects, snails, slugs, and worms. Their adaptation for catching prey include poison claws and ability to move very quickly. However, millipedes are different from centipedes. They are slow moving and eat decomposing organic matter which makes them as detrivorous. Their body have more segments with two pairs of legs per segment. With their many legs, the millipedes move in a wave-like motion. They roll into a ball for protection when they starve. And that ends our lesson today. Did you understand it very well? If not, you may go back to the lesson presented on your module. If this lesson is very clear to you, you may now answer the exercises on your module. Good luck!